Hi, my name is Eniera Matthews, and I'm the research services librarian for the Douglas and Henry Regional Academic Centers. Today, May 21st, is World Day for Cultural Diversity, for Dialogue and Development. And this holiday is celebrated by the United Nations. And Mercy University Libraries is proud to celebrate this day on behalf of our students, faculty, and staff. Today, I'm here with Dr. Ansley Booker, who is the Director for Diversity and Inclusion Initiatives. And today she'll be discussing cultural diversity. Thank you so much, Dr. Booker, for joining me. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. You're welcome. And my first question is, what is cultural diversity and why is it so important? So cultural diversity really speaks to all the different um, aspects of um, diversity. And it's important because we live in a global society, right? And, and more and more as technology expands, as people's identity and their reach and their intersectionality and interconnectedness expands, it's important that we immerse ourselves or engage ourselves in cultural diversity, right? And that will lead us to engage in cultural humil humility and cultural sensitivity. So we think about cultural diversity, we think, we think about things that I, people use to identify themselves as a part of their culture, right? But I will say even broader than that, we think about um, the different aspects of diversity, right? You think about your race and your ethnicity, right? You think about nationality, what nation you're from. You think about, um, and that may include your heritage as well. You also think about your ability. Um, you think about um, veteran status. You think about, um, what else I want to add there? You think about ability, racial, sexual orientation. You think about um, gender identity. So all those things can encompass diversity. But when we think about your culture, that speaks more to your heritage or your identity development, right? And those things that make up your culture, which includes your language and your customs and things of that nature. So I think it's important for us to have a level of humility, cultural humility and cultural sensitivity to different cultures and identity groups that surround us, of, of course. Um, and I think it's uh, important for us to also embrace that because again as I mentioned earlier as we begin to become a more global society a more interconnected society we have to make sure that we are aware and that not that we're just not but we're aware and also not tolerant but also accepting of other people from different cultures and different backgrounds and ethnicities and nationalities and that we embrace them and that we allow those people to have um be free from oppression um and free to enjoy the liberties that their identity um group um of all identity groups have, if that makes sense. And so um, I think it's very important here at Mercer because we do a lot with international um, different groups, a lot of domestic groups. And I think it's important because we always talk about majoring and changing the world, right? You change the world when you become immersed in the world. And I think that's important because you have to do that by embracing cultural diversity, sensitivity, and then also cultural humility. It's such a great response. Okay, my second question is, how can students, faculty, and staff celebrate um, cultural diversity here at Mercy University? Well, there's several ways, and I will I will say that, yes, my office has been around since October 2019, and I try to make sure that we're partnering with different departments, different colleges, um, different um, student organizations to provide cultural support. But one way that we can do, I try to make sure whether we're on the Henry County campus or Atlanta, one of the other regional academic centers, or even there in Macon, is that I post those flyers on our social media pages, including Facebook and then also Instagram. But I also post events and flyers of other student groups and other departments that are doing things as relate to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so I just try to make sure that we're keeping everybody aware of the different activities that are happening so that you can attend. Um, one of the biggest things that we wanna do in order to embrace diversity and cultural, um, cultural diversity um, is making sure that you are aware of different groups that are different from your own. Right. And Mercer has a plethora of diversity from, you know, from age to race, ethnicity, nationality, all those things that encompass diversity. And one of the things that you can do is by attending a different different um, workshops, different lecture series that we may have a department may put on webinars. We have a lot of virtual and face to face events. We just celebrated Diversity Day on uh, April the 14th. Um, we then had on the 29th of Mock Mindy. Before that, we celebrated um um, Ramadan by having an iftar on the Atlanta campus. Um, in the fall, we'll be bringing back International Day. So there's always something um, that is going on. If not sponsored by my office, maybe another department is sponsoring something or even a student organization. So I just say make sure that you're following culturally diverse groups, student organizations on Facebook, Instagram, um, and other platforms and social media, and then also stopping by the office to check out different flyers. And if you can't find things that way, 
it's always appropriate to email me and I'm happy to share with you any upcoming events that we have. I try to make sure when I'm doing my programming throughout the um, calendar year or, or academic year that I'm looking at Cultural Heritage Month. So like this month, May, is Asian, Asian American, and Pacific Islander um, Heritage Month. So this would be the month that you would want to celebrate and see a lot of programming around that, right? And then like um, next month, we'll have Juneteenth, which is a major holiday um, um, here also in America. That's now a federal holiday. So again, just looking for different activities and events. And like I said, I always post those flyers up um, on the outside of my office. And then I'm posting those same events on um, social media as well. Because we come from different backgrounds and different cultures and we have different perspectives about things, what are some ways that we can coexist or find commonality with each other? And I think, um, and that's a great question too. So I think a lot of times, one, recognizing that too is the first step. And then two, being able to engage in meaningful dialogue. And I say meaningful dialogue and courageous conversation because that means that if I know that my identity group is different from yours and we both recognize that, we are able to educate each educate each other free from our own bias using facts free from emotions and then we're able to share and talk about our different identities and backgrounds and heritage and then how these things are applicable not at just at Mercer University but maybe in the community maybe in the nation and maybe in the, even in the world and so there's a great book um it's called so you want to talk about race I think that would be a great book that if you're willing and you want to start conversations around um diversity cultural sensitivity, humility, any of those things, those hard topics that sometimes we shy away from, that book will be a great guide or a great book to help you ignite that conversation. I know last year in 2020, no, two years ago now, 2020, we used to do a series with CAPS where we talked about let's start the conversation. Because what we learned is that when we have a simple conversation with someone that we already perceive to be different from us, um, we learned that actually we have more similarities than we do differences right and sometimes you still may have just as many differences and not as many similarities but I think the thing is you have to reach across the aisle and you have to break down those barriers right because again we know that because of social media our own experiences parents you know other people around us we can become um, overwhelmed by our own bias we can become overwhelmed by stereotypes and things of that nature. And so until you meet someone from a different identity group and try to break down that barrier and then start to build this bridge to reconciliation and understanding and acceptance, you won't be able to understand or even identify with another um, an identity group. My next question is, well, you already kind of touched on it or kind of answered it in okay. your last response, um, but what are some upcoming events uh, that your department is having for cultural diversity? Yeah, so right now we're in finals week. Um, and so we really don't have um, anything right now. Um, today, actually, we're doing an event co-sponsored um, with by Atrium um, Navicent Health. And we're doing um, also in the School of Medicine and some other community partners. But this particular event tonight, it starts at five. It's going to be a PDR on the Macon campus. Um, talks about um, mortality and maternal mortality rates for women of color and how... Um, those numbers are very high, um, not only in the state of Georgia, but nationally. So we'll have um, several doctors from Mercer, Atrium Health, Navison, and some other community liaisons to have that conversation. So that's another great thing that we'll have. But like I said, we don't really have as much this month and this week because of finals. Um, we will have graduation coming up and things of that nature. But I will say that usually we kind of slow down in June and July. Um, Cinco de Mayo is on the 5th. That is another um, it's loosely tied to um, heritage. If you look up there and become immersed with that. But I say, even though this summer, if people ever want to go back and engage in some of the work we did throughout the year, the Mercer University YouTube page, Diversity Inclusion YouTube page is up so they can go back and watch recordings like from Jedi Week. Um, or if they want to go back and listen to our podcast series. So we did a very, very exquisite and lengthy review of um, racism as a pandemic um, in the United States and talked about how that really impacts public health 
and the public health crisis in the public health care system. And so we did that as a um, as a conjunction, excuse me, in conjunction with the Department of um, the Department of Health. And so that is up on our podcast, which you can find on Spotify. So we don't do as much programming over the summer. We take a break and try to reset for the fall. But again, like I said, going to the podcast, going back to the YouTube page and interacting and embracing some of our um, events. I think that'll be great. And then also, if people can think of things um, or things they would like to see me do in the fall or in next spring in 2023, I would love to have them to email me that or submit that to me because we're always looking for speakers. We're always looking for events or things that I may not have thought of or someone has not already previously recommended um, for us. But I will say, um, again, um, Juneteenth is also going to be um, celebrated um, with the um celebrated here Macon and I know in Atlanta and some other different areas community events that I've been trying to post and keep people abreast of those things as well and like I said it's Asian 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 American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month and so any events that students are planning um, I've been trying to share those as well as well but it's usually probably gonna be not as much only because of um because they're gra- they're graduating or they're getting ready to go to the finals or summer school. Um, Memorial Day is happening. I know a lot of people celebrate events around that for veterans. You know, Mer- Mercer's a Purple Heart University. Um, so that things in and, our, in and around the community may be up and ready to be shared, engaged in with that. But I think that that's pretty much about it. Uh, lastly, Mercy University Libraries has access to Canopy, which is a uh, video streaming platform similar to Netflix. And there is a diversity, equity, and inclusion collection that I recommend students, faculty, and staff check oh, out awesome. to learn more mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. about cultural that's diversity. It. And um, what are some other, I know you mentioned the book, but what are some other like resources you oh, recommend goodness. for cultural diversity? Oh my goodness, so much, so much. I, I mean, if you ever come to my office, I could just run you down a list, but I'll do a plug too. So if I, so I won't, you know, miss any books or any videos or anything like that. We normally do the Mercer Social, I do several things. We do the Mercer Social Justice Book Club. So we just wrapped that up um, last week or week before last with the Racial Healing Handbook, which is a great book, get on Amazon, any of those platforms. And it's by Dr. Annalise Singh. And it talks about how you have to go through um, these different steps of socialization and identity development in order to get to a point where we can talk about racial reconciliation and racial healing. So that was an awesome read. We also did um, MLK in the Wilderness. We've done, um, that was a movie, movie screening. I think that's on different platforms. We also did On the Basis of Sex uh, about Ruth, Bader, Ruth Judge Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, so you want to talk about race. We did What is CRT or Critical Race Theory. Um, and so a lot of these are already books. Multiculturalism on Campus, um, Latino Threat. I'm just naming some other books that we've gone over. But again, um, if you just do a quick search for diversity, equity, and inclusion or social justice books, um, usually those are those books that come up, you know, um, and that you want to engage in and learn more if you're looking for an increased level of knowledge will pop up there. Um, I know um, one of the other things that the library did for us um, was that they put all of the books that I had recommended, or at least I, they made ebooks. Um, accessible to students, faculty, and staff. And I did put that on the diversity.mercer.edu website. So if you go into the diversity.mercer.edu, and I think if you click on resources, all those books now that we have in ebook format are now available from the library. And again, it's so many more, um, so many more books and so many more titles than I could ever name right now. Um, I always look for books about also leading and empowering change or inclusive leadership. Those books are already great are usually pretty good. Um, and then they also have DEI books on different sectors of the population, right? So for a lot of our healthcare students, they have like medical apartheid and different books like that. And those books talk about social determinants of health and, you know, the historical nature of healthcare system in America and how it has oppressed or marginalized certain groups of people. So again, so you also might want to look for your particular field. Okay. And so if you ever need a recommendation, I'm always happy to do that as well. Or you can stop by my office and check out my collection. I have quite, quite a few books on different topics. Hmm. Well, that was my last question. Um, thank you so much for joining me in this Zoom session of cultural diversity.